Greyhounds back atop the state leaderboards, and we've got some more Mick Conference action coming your way on CHTV. Glad to have you with us. With Brad Davis, I'm Jake Holmes. And tonight, inside the Eric Clark Activity Center, your Carmel Greyhounds play host to the Wildcats of Lawrence North High School. They come in 8-6, and six, the Greyhounds at 12-1. and one. Lawrence North is coached by Jack Kiefer, who's been coaching high school basketball for a total of 42 years, 38 of those being in command of the Wildcats. And on the other side, Carmel's Scott Hetty comes in holding a 70 and 20 record in his fourth year here at Carmel. Brad, what are you looking forward to watching tonight? Uh, a big thing, Jake, first thing is that you don't, if you're Carmel, you don't want to start off sluggish. You haven't played in over a week. And defensively, big thing is to lock down the two top leading scorers for Lawrence North. That's just Deshaun, Francis, and Perry Poindexter Jr. Poindexter's a taller guy, so I look for McRoberts to get on him. So look for a guard for Carmel to step up, try to lock down Francis. Got some starters for you tonight. First for the Wildcats of Lawrence North. Number 14, Deterio Scott. Number 20, Terrell Davis. Number 24, Deshaun Francis. Number 32, Perry Poindexter Jr. And number 42, Detavian Walker. And for the Greyhounds, we've had the normal starting five that have started every ball game this year. And number three, Ryan Klein. Number 22, Zach McRoberts. Number 30, Michael Bruns. Number 33, Parker Brinhold. And number 34, Keegan Culp. And Jake, when teams have had success against the Greyhounds, it's when the opponent has puts the ball in transition. Lawrence North a lot of the athleticism, so I look for them to push the ball early, try to get some easy scores in transition. So Perry Poindexter comes in at 6'8. McRoberts at 6'7. They will be jumping tonight's ball game. And Carmel really hasn't played against a team that's had two really good scores. I mean, normally there's like one guy, and then McRoberts will match up against him and completely lock him down, but It'll be kind of a challenge for the grounds, knowing that their best defensive player will most likely be able to take away a lot of what Poindexter can do. But Francis is their leading scorer. He's a 6-2 guard, so look for Kleiner, Bruns to step up against Francis. Bruns playing defense. He's kind of been hot and cold. There's times where he's elite. There's times where he's played very poorly. Klein kind of just gets the job done. So for the grounds, you just want to stay patient defensively, try to be aggressive, cause some turnovers. So the tip is secured by Lawrence North, and we're underway here at the Eric Clark Activity Center. First shot by Perry Poindexter Jr. is off the mark. Now see what the Greyhounds can do on their first possession of the ball game. Now here's Bruns off that far baseline. McRoberts is gonna be guarded by Terrell Davis here to start the ball game. Good pass inside to Bruns. Bruns trying to get Francis in the air, and he's able to get it to go from the right side. Yeah, a really good cut in the lane by Bruns. The pass came a little bit late, but he was able to go up strong and able to get it to go. He wanted the foul call there, a lot of contact, but no call. Did a good job finishing strong at the rim. So Michael Bruns getting his first two points of the ball game just underway here at the Eric Clark Activity Center. The Greyhounds holding on to a 2-0 lead off the Michael Bruns layup. One minute in now. Now here's Davis with it off that left wing. Finds Francis inside to Walker. Walker's jump hook is off the mark. He somehow gets his own rebound. Tipped around and Francis is gonna come away with it. Scott tried to get it inside to Walker but it was taken away by Keegan Culp. So the Greyhounds will get another possession. Six and a half to go in the first quarter. The Greyhounds still leading two to zero. So Bruns now with it, 6-10 to go now in the first period. McRoberts now is trapped, gives it back out to Klein. Really good defense by Ellen thus far on the defensive end of the grounds. As you know, run a lot of sets off the ball, a lot of screens. They've done a good job hedging those screens, getting the passing lane so that is not open. So Klein's first three of the ball game is off the mark. Bruns and Francis both scrap for the rebound. And they're gonna call it off of Deshaun Francis, so that'll give it back to the Greyhounds. So Bernhold inbounds to Klein, who's picked up right here by Davis. So Deterio Scott, who's just standing at 5'10", is on Keegan Culp right now. See if they can't get it down to him. Klein now with it. Kicks it out to Bruns. 
Ah, uh, that's Zach right at the free throw line. He's flashing for the ball. He wanted it. Get the ball at the free throw line. There's a lot you can do with it. Go in the interior, draw some defenders, kick the ball out. Just didn't see Zach there. Bernholz, who not, who's not really a bad three-point shooter, just not able to knock that one in. If you're calling here, you've got to push the ball in transition. Haven't had a lot of good shots at the basket, so try to speed things up and catch this Ellen defense. Off guard, the Grants have been very patient thus far in this game, which is normally what we see from them. But as of right now, they're having, not having much success. Klein doing it himself, getting that nifty layup to go. Extend Karma's lead, 4-0. to zero. Just under five minutes to go in the first quarter. So Walker has it, gives it off to Francis. Francis, the Wildcats' leading scorer, right around 14 a game. He wants it back, they give it to him. Davis now, great interior pass to Walker. Walker not able to get, to get it to go off the window, but he's able to follow his own shot and put it right back in. So Tavian Walker getting the Wildcats on the board here. Cuts Carmel's lead to two. So Bruns now picked up by Scott, finds McRoberts. McRoberts' 15-foot jump shot is good. Of course, that jump shot is something that he's developed this year, and as of late, he's kind of pulled through it. Pulled to it a lot more than we saw in the middle of the season. At the beginning, he did it a lot. He kind of slowed down a little bit. Now, in the past couple games, he's been going through that jump shot, and it's been falling for him. So, it's a really good thing to have in your repertoire as a big guy who's kind of skinny, so you're not going to get a lot of opportunities scoring at the basket. So, don't be afraid to spot up and shoot the ball because he definitely has the ability to. We're just over three and a half to go in the first quarter. Greyhounds leading 6 2. If you're just tuning in, Klein has a bucket along with McRoberts and Bruns to round out Carmel's six points. Walker with the only two for the Wildcats. Until then, Poindexter able to get them on the board. Yeah, a really good job by Poindexter. Getting the ball in the short corner, fading the back, able to knock it down, no hesitation. So Klein will bring it up now as the one guard. Coach Kiefer's gonna send three Wildcats to the scores table. He's gonna send in Quadre Lawless, Josh Thompson and Pat Bacon. Bacon the junior, Thompson the senior, and Lawless the senior. Thompson's got it now, he's averaging right around seven a game. Francis now able to get in the lane, he's able to get it to go off the window. Yeah, really good job changing speeds there. He got in the lane, he kind of cupped the ball at his chest so the ball couldn't be so out of that. Able to finish with the basket. So Francis' bucket ties the game at six. 2.45 to go in the first quarter. Now McRoberts off that right block. Great cut by Keegan Cole, but he's able to get it to go. Awesome pass by Zach. He got the ball high, so the defender couldn't swat at it. And then Cole cut it at the right time. Just kind of a little soft pass to Cole, who had the easy layup at the basket. So all eight of the Greyhounds points have been scored by different players, Klein, McRoberts, Bruns, and Culp, all with a bucket apiece. Yeah, Keegan, at the beginning of the year, he played very well offensively, much like Zach in his jump shot during the middle of the season. He kind of slowed down, didn't get a lot going. And then in that Cathedral game, you just kind of saw a different player, this kind of play that we saw at the beginning of the season. And as of late, he's been a great offensive asset. So Bruns finds Klein. Klein now tried to do it himself. Couldn't get the floater to go, but McRoberts is there with the follow. Yeah, that's just Zach showcasing his great athletic ability, able to sky above everybody, able to finish that. So McRoberts now leads all scores with four. Bacon has it now, he's the six foot junior. Thompson now finds Francis. Francis is gonna try and fire a three from this near wing and it's off the mark. Rebound's gonna go to Zach McRoberts. Minute 40 to go in the first quarter. Greyhounds leading 10 to six. McRoberts, are, McRoberts gives it off to Klein, now Bruns. Trying to get it inside to McRoberts. That's being guarded by Quadra Lawless right now. They actually just switched off him, but Lawless only sit, sitting at 6-5. He's picked up by Francis now. Cole has it now. Finds a cutting burn hole, now Bruns. Bruns, baseline jumper is good. It's tremendously done by Parker, getting the ball in the lane. He didn't even attempt to go to the basket, did that little touch pass. 
to Bruns, who we knew was coming off the screen over on the baseline, able to get it right to Bruns. And Bruns was able to knock it down. So Bruns picks up his fourth point on the ball game. And Thompson able to get that nice floater to fall in. So Thompson getting on the board here first for the Wildcats. That's his first bucket of the night. So 40 seconds for the ground, trying to show, slow the ball down for one good shot for the majority of this first quarter. They've been playing very patiently on offense. So do nothing now. Try to wait for something to present itself. And you know, necessarily if that doesn't mean you don't have to wait all the way to the end of the quarter. A lot of times teams, they're just kind of assume that they have to take the absolute last shot, even if a really good shot presents itself. Up. Just don't be afraid to get a good shot up if it presents itself, but till then, try to kill as much clock as you can. So no timeouts or free throws or any stoppage of the clock here in the first quarter. Kolb's gonna try to fire a three from the corner and he's able to knock it down. That's exactly what happens when we could get the ball at the free throw line to Zach. He's such a good player going to the basket. The defense is gonna collapse great back over to Kolb. So a straight eight minutes through the first quarter. No stoppage of play, really, and the Greyhounds are holding on to a 15-8 lead. Kolb now leads all scores with five as he's able to get that three to fall at the end of the first, first quarter. So, like I said, at the end of the first quarter, the Greyhounds are going to be leading 15-8. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball on CHTV. Back here at the Eric Clark Activity Center for second quarter action. Brad Davis, I'm Jake Combs, and the Greyhounds will get the first possession of the second quarter. So the Greyhounds will start the second quarter with Bruns, Klein, Colt, McRoberts, and Bernhold, all five starters. Have not seen anyone off the bench for the Greyhounds thus far. Allen has actually done a very good job defensively. The Greyhounds have had really long possessions. As you see them almost get a steal there, but it's kind of like a bend don't break attitude. They've been playing so good for the majority of the possession. And then the last moment, the Greyhounds just kind of make a really good cut, a really good touch pass or something like that that opens up a really good shot at the basket. So Ellen, this defense, just keep playing like this. At some point, the Greyhounds are going to slow down a little bit offensively. And that's a time where on offense, you want to pounce on the opportunity. So this time, Kolb's three is a little bit off the mark. And it's tipped out of bounds by Parker Bernhold. So the Wildcats will retain possession. So Pat Bacon will bring it up as the one guard for Ellen. So Poindexter comes out of the game, so Ellen now is playing with a little bit of smaller lineup, so look for a lot more jump shots. With this kind of lineup, Ellen doesn't have a lot of size in general, but Poindexter brings a little bit of size in that when he gives with the basket, goes to the basket, he collapses a lot when he catches the ball on the baseline or something like that. So with this kind of lineup in for Ellen, you've got to get some shots going off screens or just be aggressive to the basket like Francis did there. So Francis was fouled on the drive to the bucket and he'll be headed to the line for two shots. Francis with two points on the night, looking for his third. Unable to get the friendly roll on that first free throw. Score still reads 15 to eight, just underway. Second quarter action here on CHTV. These teams, two teams have played uh, the same team five times this year. Carmel's five and zero in those games. Ellen is 4-1, their only loss coming against North Central with Carmel. Played very well against, although Ellen only lost to them by four, so. Ellen's 8-6, and six, kind of an average team, but it's kind of a sleeper team that at some point can kind of heat up going into the postseason. Season. They've got a lot of talent, it's just kind of something that they've got to develop as the season winds down. So Zach's pass is a little bit too tall for Parker Bernhold. And Coach Heddy wants a 30-second timeout. So while we get this break, let's take a, a look at the state stand or state rankings right now. Rather, the Greyhounds obviously sitting at 12 and one. Their only loss coming to Cathedral, HSC, who actually just beat Tech, moved up to number two. They're sitting at 14 and two. Tech's at 17 and two. Fort Wayne North, they're at 16 and one. Brownsburg, who Carmel beat the first game of the year, they're at number five. Cathedral at number six with four losses. And Penn is at 11 and one. They're ranked seventh in the state. Mooresville, Richmond, and Lake Central round out the top 10 there. So really, this state championship year is uh, it's really wide open. Yeah, next game, Carmel plays Zionsville. The game after that, they play HSC. It's kind of funny. For the majority of the year, Carmel thought that the guy that they have to beat is Arsenal Tech. Arsenal Tech lost a couple games of late. Now, HSC has kind of emerged as that number two team. So it kind of looked like Carmel was just going to have to wait to the postseason to play their number one foe. And now, all of a sudden, 
They're playing the number two team in HSC in a couple games, so that'll be a great game for Coleman to gauge just how competitive they will be in the postseason. Of course, they've been the number one team for the majority of the year, so it'll be interesting to see if they can kind of hold up that number one ranking against HSC. Like I said, Tech, they're at 17-2 and right now. They're only two losses. Come to the Bowman Academy, who Carmel actually beat earlier in the year in HSC. So 6.17 to go in the second quarter. The Greyhounds still leading 15-9. Lawless now down to Walker. Walker, jump hook over Bernhold. Scoots off the back of the rim. It's a little bit too strong. So Coach Eddie's going to send Preston Flamian to the scorer's table to check in at the next dead ball. Dangerous pass is taken away by Thompson. But I think they're going to get him for calling. or stepping out of bounds, rather, and they are. Yeah, that's a really bad pass by Bernhold. We don't see a lot of sloppy passes like that from him and really any Carmel player in general. So that pass just a little bit too high. He was lucky that it was stolen out of bounds. So Preston Flamey will enter for Keegan Culp. Culp, the HSE junior transfer. I'm sure he's itching for the game next Thursday at HSE to return to his former school. So Francis will come out of the game and then Poindexter comes in for him, so for two straight kind of lineups for LN. They've only got to have their number one leading scorer in the game, so they've kind of got one go-to guy. Francis wasn't able to get much going since he was in, so I look for Ellen to try to get the ball down low to Poindexter. He's not really the traditional post-up guy, but he's the kind of guy that can create a lot of havoc when he gets in the lane. He didn't really get a lot of touches when he was in the game in the first quarter, so good job for them going right to him. Of course, that was a really good shot at the basket. Got the ball on the low block, turnaround jumper. Went in and out, so that's a good shot to keep going to. Grounds don't really have a guy to match up with him, except for McRoberts, so just keep going to him. The Klein's third three of the night, third time's his charm. 0 for 2 on his first two tries. He's able to knock that one home for his fifth point of the night. So Poindexter feeds Walker off that left block, picked up by Bernhold. He's able to get Bernhold in the air and able to knock it home. Yeah, really good dribble there by... Uh, Walker trying to power dribble, back Parker off a little bit, then he kind of pump fake, then he was able to fade towards the baseline, knock down the shot. So Flamian now has it near baseline. Four and a half to go in the first half. Yeah, Flamian has Parker right on the baseline, doesn't see him. Parker was wide open under the basket, but Flamian was already looking to get the ball out. So Ellen still playing that 2-3 zone. Klein's gonna try again from three, and he's able to knock this one down as well, so Klein now leading all scores with eight. Klein's just unbelievable in general, shooting the ball there. I mean, he just kind of nonchalantly pulls the ball up. It's almost like you kind of forget that he's shooting the ball. He just kind of shoots like it's nothing. Able to knock down long shots like that, really catches the defense off guard a lot of times. So Klein, who missed his first two threes of the night, has knocked down his last two. So Klein heating up a little bit. Poindexter could have been called for the travel there. Yeah, nope. all of a sudden that screen and roll, he had Poindexter going to the basket. He picked up his dribble. If he took a couple more dribbles there, Poindexter kind of could have drifted a little bit more towards the baseline. Would have had a good opportunity at the basket. That's why it's so important to just not pick up your dribble. You want to try to keep dribbling the ball until the defense forces you to pick it up. A lot of times players pick up the ball right when they think they're going to pass. So when you realize the pass isn't there, you're kind of stuck with nothing. LN just not getting the friendly rolls tonight. Walker misses another jumper. Point blank range. They've missed now three or four of those. Score is 21-11. Klein's gonna pull it from downtown again. This one a little bit off the mark and McRoberts skies for the rebound. Somebody hit the deck for LN. That was Josh Thompson. Yeah, Zach was able to pull that ball down for that sequence. Josh Thompson was guarding Zach. When Zach first got the ball, I'm surprised he didn't try to take him to the basket. Zach is almost is mammoth, com mammoth compared to Josh Thompson. And then he kind of was just like standing there. And that opportunity, McRoberts has got to realize that he's got a shorter guy on him. Try to call for the ball and post up. We haven't really seen him post up very much this season, but we have a guy that, that, that's that much shorter than you. You want to take advantage of that. So Klein inbounds, tipped around. He tried to find McRoberts, and I think they're going to get Ryan Klein with the foul. So Coach Eddie obviously not happy about that turnover. Klein only averaging about one turnover a game, so that's... Definitely the number you want to see from your point guard. Klein very rarely turns the ball over. Yeah, the really big question coming into this year was how is Ryan Klein going to take over the duties of Michael Volvic, who did just such a tremendous job handling the keys of the offense the past couple of years. 
I mean, I'm still kind of debating on whether he's really the traditional point guard. He's got the right size, he's a great shooter, and he's got really good ball handling skills. He's just not very quick, but he kind of makes up for that by being very smart with the ball. He makes good passes, doesn't make a lot of bad decisions, so he's kind of a game manager with the ball. I mean, he still has a lot of opportunities to score the ball, considering that Bruns a lot of times will bring the ball up, so Klein's did a very good job, and I think he's impressed everybody, including Coach Hetty this year. And of course, next year he's probably gonna assume the point guard role once again. So he's really kind of matured into this role. And Klein's still the Greyhounds' leading scorer. He's at about 15 and a half a game, and we're gonna see back-to-back -back fouls for the Greyhounds on this possession. And it's really kind of hard to figure that Klein is the point guard because a lot of times he'll bring the ball down, pass the ball off pretty much immediately, and then go back into playing the two guard, which he played last year. Of course, he gets a lot of his scores coming off screens for shots or really just kind of pulling up in the face of someone, not a lot of times you'll see him kind of create his own shot off the dribble. Something that we've seen this year, he's kind of developed that floater. We saw in a couple games where he's scored eight or 10 points off that floater. We don't really see him going to the basket very much, but when he does, it's not because of his quickness, it's because he does a good job sealing the defender off with his off ball hand. So Deterio Scott's jumper is off the mark, rebound tipped around and it's finally tipped in by Perry Poindexter Jr. Yeah, that's really bad defensive rebounding by the grounds. No guys boxed out. Ellen's more athletic, athletic than you, so they're just going to jump right over you and get that offensive rebound. And that's just going to kill you coming into the close game, realizing that you're giving up points like that, that you initially had, forcing the first miss. So score is now 21-13. 2-13 to go. McRoberts goes to work in the paint. Can't get anything going. The rebound's going to go to Walker. So two minutes and change to go in the first half. Go to work now if you're Poindexter. You've got a shorter guy, Poindexter, on him. He got in the interior. He traveled. But for a moment, Bruns, you kind of saw he bit it down a little bit, which made Francis open at the arc. Poindexter wasn't able to get the ball to him because he traveled. He torn, turned face to the basket. He had a good shot at the basket. He could have created some contact. He could have kicked the ball out. So a lot of things you could do. If you get the ball down low to Poindexter, there's only been two or three times where they've been able to get the ball to a guy down low. I really don't understand why teams don't do it against Carmel. You don't really see a lot of teams in high school basketball try to get the ball down low to the post. Well, I'm not sure why, because there really isn't a great strategy defending that. Because a lot of times the Grands only have one guy down there. And a lot of times the Grands kind of are shorter in size, so they've got to bring another guy, so that'll leave someone open. So as far as LN, if you can't push the ball in transition, if you're forced to slow it down, try to get the ball down low. So Francis now was fouled on that drive, trying to go coast to coast. 1.35 to go in the second quarter. Greyhound's still leading 21-13. Francis left the first one short. Yeah, Francis has had trouble from the line this tonight. I mean, he's a pretty good shooter, especially from the leading score. You'd, you'd expect him to knock down a good amount of those free throws in a game that where they're only down by eight points. That can really come back and bite you as he misses the second. In those games, at the end of the game, you realize you only lose by five or six points, and then you realize that you miss like 12 free throws. <laughs> yeah. So you want to knock those down. You really don't realize in the moment how important those kind of shots are. Just kind of little margins like that can end up making the hugest difference as the game comes to the end. So the six-man Preston Flamian knocking down the triple for the Greyhounds. Gets his first three points of the night. Yeah, Flamey is not the flashiest player. In fact, he's pretty mundane. And it's kind of hard for the average guy to really realize, well, I mean, what's he's doing now? He's a skinny guy, looks kind of uncoordinated, but the things that he does, where he makes up for his unathleticism, is he's really smart. He's able to pick his spots, he runs the offense perfectly, and he's a really good shooter. And I mean, even his shot, he kind of looks like he just picked up a basketball, but it works for him. So you kind of got to give him a lot of credit. Uses his mind a lot, and a lot of times he gets a lot of his points getting the ball in transition. He's a really good job running the floor with the offense. He's a really tough player. He's only a sophomore, and he's rated as one of the best sophomores in Indiana. So that's kind of something that will develop over the his stay here at Carmel, get a little stronger, who will be a very good offensive player. So just over a minute to go in the first half. Greyhounds lead back up 24 to 15. Klein now has a great interior pass to Keegan Cole, who's able to get it to go off the window. So now here's Scott in transition, picked up by Klein. So 
Scott gives it back outside to Terrell Davis, who's picked up by Flamian. Now 30 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, Cole is doing a very good job on Poindexter. Poindexter flashed with, flash with the ball. A couple feet in the free throw line. He had an opportunity, and he had a passing lane there. But Cole at the last minute did, did a good job getting his hand in that passing lane, negating the attempt. So Cole, a lot shorter than Poindexter, but he's done a good job being physical down there and not giving Poindexter a lot of opportunity to get the ball. So Francis able to get that front end of the one and one to fall. The Greyhounds have 18 fouls. The Wildcats only have one. So the Wildcats playing pretty good defense here without fouling. McRoberts thought he was picked. Francis' pocket clean there. The ref thought otherwise. Francis not able to get the second one to fall. He's got six. 15 seconds to go now in the half. Klein has it. 10 seconds now. Five seconds. The Greyhounds got to go to work. Klein is absolutely hammered by Walker. And they've got five fouls to give, so not a bad foul there. Four seconds to go in the half. Burn hold the trigger for the Greyhounds. Something I look for here is Klein get the ball. Zach to set a quick screen. Try to get a jumper open for Klein. Klein now with one second. He's got to throw it up. And it just tips off the back of the backboard. So at the end of the first half, the Greyhounds will be leading 26-16. They're up by 10. Brad, what can you make of this first half? Exactly what you expect from the Greyhounds. Good offense, good defense. So we will start the second half, like I said, with a score of 26-16. Greyhounds up by 10. We'll be back with second half action here on CHTV, Channel 99. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball. <laughs> 